Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Olasino. I'm an account executive with CCSI, and I'd like to thank everyone for attending today's observability webinar. Today, our practice manager, Joe Goldberg, will be presenting. And for those of you not familiar with CCSI, we've been in business since 1974, and our core competencies include infrastructure, which incorporates data center, IPT, wireless, disaster recovery, and, on, and security, real-time breach detection, risk assessments, pen and vulnerability testing, DDoS solutions, secure mail, and endpoint protection. Also on the cloud side, we provide services around migration to the cloud, backup, disaster recovery, and cost containment for those customers already in the cloud. We also provide application monitoring solutions, which we'll be talking at great length today. We're a managed service provider and a managed security service provider, and we also provide third-party hardware maintenance, break fix, feed on the street services. For any questions during today's call, please place them in our WebEx chat. And now I'd like to take this opportunity and introduce you to Joe Goldberg of CCSI. Thanks, Joe, I really appreciate it. <clears throat> Today we're gonna to be talking about monitoring and observability and kind of what's the difference and why does it matter? Observability being kind of a, a new term in uh, the, the industry. <clears throat> so as uh, Leslie Lamport uh, once said, a distributed system is one in which the failure of a computer you didn't even know existed can render your own computer unusable. Um, that becomes more and more true as services become uh, more and more diverse and people move to the cloud and microservices, et cetera. Um, things that you didn't even know were there can um, destroy your service. Traditional monitoring was designed to monitor a server. So you had uh, things like Nagios or maybe you just SSH'd into the box to take a look or used something like App Dynamics. But it was to look at a, either a specific bare metal server or a virtual machine. And it was easy. You had an agent or you remoted into the machine and you took a look at what was going on inside. You checked it against a threshold and you alerted if the threshold was, vi was violated. But in today's environment, how do you monitor things like Kubernetes um, AWS Fargate, um, Azure Functions, which is um, a serverless environment, or AWS Lambda. Nagios and these other tools, they don't scale like that. They don't have the discovery capabilities. They don't have um, the ability to be able to monitor at, low, low, at very high frequencies and uh, low latency. So you end up with an environment in a microservices or cloud environment that looks something like this and it's constantly changing as containers and servers are brought up and brought down and something like a Nagios is just not gonna scale to this kind of environment. So what is observability? From Wikipedia, it's uh, in control theory, observability is a measure of how well internal states of a system can be inferred from knowledge of its external outputs. The observability and controllability of a system are mathematical duels meaning the more observable it is, the more controllable it is. So what does that all mean in English? It means can you understand what's happening inside your code and inside your systems simply by asking questions using your tools? Can you answer any new question you can think of or are you only locked into answering questions that you're prepared for? And that's really the difference between observability and monitoring. In monitoring, you're answering questions that you're prepared for. Observability allows you to ask new questions that you may not have been prepared for and be able to find answers. There's three pillars of observability, metrics, logging, and tracing. <clears throat> logging is logging. I mean, it's been around since the beginning of systems. It's an immutable timestamp record of discrete events that happened over time. This person logged in, this process died, um, this process started. Uh, it's just, it's a, it's a log of what happened. Tracing is a little bit newer. Um, a trace is a representative, representation of a series of casually related distributed events that encode the end-to-end -end request flow through a distributed system. Um, so for example here, that we're looking at in this diagram, we're looking at the trace of a DHCP request where 
excuse me, we're serving up the DHCP, we're doing a read, we're serving up all the information, and then we're getting all the parameters. And it's timing how long each of the steps took so that you can then go back and troubleshoot where things might be broken. And then of course we have metrics. Metrics are a numeric representation of, of data measured over time. How full is my disk drive? How um, much CPU am I using? Um, this graph here is looking at the peak Go routines running uh, among all instances. Um, anything that you can count, in either a histogram or a gauge or whatever. So what metrics should we be monitoring since we're pulling in metrics? Google defines the four golden signals, latency, traffic, error, and saturation. Latency is the time to service a request. Traffic is our requests per second. Errors are the error rates of requests. Not just did the request um, fail to give you a response, but did it give you an incorrect response as well. Saturation is the fullness of the service. How, how are you scaling over time? And they may be asking through all of this, what about alerting? Alerting is an important part of it. Uh, you want to be notified when things go very badly wrong. Um, and in an observability environment, everything is a, a little bit more um, buttoned up. It's the attempt is to try to make sure that there are not as many false alarms. There's a lot of uh, statistical uh, math that goes into the alerts or can go into them. So example here, a metrics-based alert on state. Is my service up? You can say, is it up or down? But you can also do things like, do I have the correct number of load balancers that I expect? My environment is supposed to have at least three. Do I have at least three? And if I go down to two, alert me. Metrics-based thresholds. Is our load balancer at 50% capacity in terms of sessions? So am I running at 50% of the number of sessions? Um, are 50% of the tests taking longer than 10 minutes? If you're running test transactions to make sure your environment is up and running, are more than half of them taking longer than 10 minutes? If there are, well then alert me because there must be a problem somewhere that I need to investigate. And then you have log-based alerts based on a threshold. So for example, this one here is looking for abusive activity. So if I see more than three events in 30 minutes, then send me an alert. Also from the Google SRE book, which is Site Recovery, Site Reliability Engineering, teams send their pager-worthy alerts to their on-call rotation. And those should be your super critical, you know, hair on fire alerts. And they're important, but subcritical alerts go to their ticket queues. Everything else just gets retained as informational data and shows up as status on dashboards. Now CCSI has a visibility as a service offering which covers the three pillars of observability. We have monitoring, we have logging and tracing and the ability to look inside not just your infrastructure but inside any applications that you may be developing. CCSI focuses on the operational systems monitoring, dynamic cloud environments, whether they're public or private cloud, um, the full CICD process, containers and container organizations, orchestration, that could be Docker, Kubernetes, or any of the other container technologies, um, AKS, uh, um, Fargate, whatever. And the latest in serverless technology like Amazon, AWS Lambda, um, and services like that. So just to kind of tie it all up, the, all of this is so that you can start being more proactive. You're not a firefighter. The goal is to get alerts before things go wrong, before your users start complaining. So try to be proactive and don't be a firefighter. Does anybody have any questions? I had two questions, Joe. One was the tools that are used. Are they specific to CCSI in-house tools or are they um, tools that are available to the public? There are tools that are available to the public that CCSI has uh, highly customized to, uh, for our customers to meet their needs. And the other question was for the onboarding, what's a typical you know, time frame um, from beginning to end to get customer, mid-sized customer up to speed? For a proof of concept, we could get somebody up and running online for a, a dozen or so 
uh, servers or instances in probably under an hour. Uh, to bring a full environment online, it depends upon the, the customer, but it's, it's, it's very simple. It's, uh, we need the, the IPs, we need access, and on certain devices, we may need to install an agent. Thanks, Joe. I'd like to thank everyone for your time today. Your account manager and myself will be following up to discuss next steps. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day.